Well, there goes the 2290 off to go get the clutch fixed. Marv got the 2294 all fixed up. If you remember back in, I believe it was the end of June, we were making hay across the road over here and it just quit driving and we couldn't get it to move. The rear end had actually went out on it. There's a pin in the back there and the pin actually snapped in the rear end and he figured out what caused it. There's some switches in the clutch on that tractor. The 94 series is a little bit different than the 90 series. The 94 series have a lot more electrical stuff as far as the power shift goes and all that kind of stuff. These here tractors, they're just hydraulic power shift. And same with the clutches, I don't think there's anything uh, electrical on them. So one of them switches wasn't doing its job right or something. And it was actually, whenever you let the clutch out, it was putting it in first and second both on the power shift. So that tractor just jump and take off. Well, that jerking around after a while, it actually uh, broke the pin there in the rear end. That's not good, but he got it fixed back up again. It also needed new brakes. I think he had, he had the axles pulled out of it. I mean, he had the whole tractor tore apart. My dad and his buddy Ryan, they actually took the tractor down, the 2294, to get fixed. We just got the 2290 loaded up. They're taking it down to Marv's. He's got to split it and put a clutch in it and then they're bringing the 2294 home. It's just me here today, it's a Saturday. There's not much going on, it's raining. So I gotta feed the cows here. We just got done mixing feed. And then Ryan came with uh, my great uncle's dump truck and trailer and he's, uh, Ryan's driving it, taking it down and then dad's riding along to help get it off and uh, help get the 94 brought it back home. the cows fed today is actually september 23rd and we're getting this rain off of a hurricane coming up the coast here it's uh it's not raining hard but it's just enough that we're outside doing work you just get soaked pretty much it's like a mess but we'll take it it's uh it's been a little dry lately but we got stuff to do on rainy days anyhow the pen out front up here at the heifer farm they have corn silage and they have hay in the racks. We feed them corn silage and then grain. We top dress the corn silage every day with grain. Some of the calves will get calf feed. The younger ones here to the right in this pen, they get calf feed and uh, a bucket of high moisture corn. And then this pen here, they just get high moisture corn since they're older animals. Out back here, my dad and Pap did some changing around, moved some animals around. Before, the steers, they were all mixed up in this pen here, and then the younger ones were over in that pen, the next pen down there. And they moved all the bigger steers into the steer pen. We had this closed off because they had the fence tore down out through there, and they went through and put a five strand high tensile fence up with three strands of electric because the steers are always busting through it and they get to rubbing the barbed wire and then they stretch the barbed wire and then the barbed wire would get against the high tensile fence and short the electric out. It was just not very good. So they went through and I was at school one day and tore the old fence out and put a new one up there. Now that we can keep the steers in here, we can feed them a lot more and uh, focus on finishing them out. When they were all in this pen here, we couldn't, you know, wasn't as easy to feather out as much feed as 
we need now we can pile the feed to them let them eat what they want and it uh, they grow a lot faster they grow a lot faster in a small pen like that compared to a uh, big pen with all these other animals this pen down here some of these calves were in this pen and then some of them were the calves from out front a couple of them there need dehorned here once the weather gets colder and this pen here it's got some whole scenes in it and then some smaller steers and the next pen down here the breeding age heifer pen last video the last video i made up here i said that we were going to move some of these beef heifers down off the hill and put them in this pen because they're going to have calves soon we had we had four fresh so far we go grab the new hole and skid loader up here in the lean to and pull a corn wagon out it's got some corn in it my papa brought some high moisture corn up to start keeping up here since the weather's getting colder in the summertime you can't keep a whole bunch up here so what we end up doing is just bringing it up in five gallon buckets on the back of the side by side each day but now since the weather's getting colder we can keep a bunch up here in this wagon without it heating and uh, spoiling So here's all the steers, uh, they're getting pretty big. Like I said in the one video, we're gonna be selling them here. One, because we need room, and two, we don't have anybody wanting freezer beef right now. Beef prices are up. I think we'll uh, get paid pretty good for these. You want them around 1,500 pounds, uh, 1,516 16 around that area. If they're a little less than 15, uh, you don't really, Get as much for them so yeah, they need to grow a little more yet like that one there this, this black angus here and then there's a red one one of these red ones here is pretty decent size a couple black ones couple red ones and then the other ones are a little bit smaller they need to go a little ways yet until they can uh, be big enough to leave i had some questions in uh, one video about how we sell our beef that mentioned about how we have people that buy beef off of us it's basically just family and uh friends and people that just have gotten beef off of us for years now but what we'll do is we'll uh we'll schedule a beef to get butchered about the time whenever somebody wants it if they want a whole or a half we'll split with somebody we take them to the butcher shop there's a local butcher shop we deal with all the time uh, we take them there and then from there it's up to the person to let them know you know how they want it cut up if they want it cut up a certain way if they want steaks and or just all hamburger depending on you know the person they might want different things so that's all up to them we just take them there and then whoever buys the beef off of us they just pay my uncle Charlie and then they also would pay for the cutting and wrapping at the, the butcher shop so buying beef right now it's not very cheap but if you would go to the grocery store and buy beef all the time it would uh, add up and actually be cheaper to buy you know, a whole or half or a quarter to have in the freezer than it would be to be buying a little bit at a time because they're gonna charge more at the store than uh, a local farmer we get our cut out of it and then the buyer will pay the butcher shop so hope that answers some questions um for those of you that asked okay i'm gonna hop in the skitter here and go up and try to get some silage dumped down here and i can give them guys some grain
do. I wanted to keep the wagon over that way some, but it just took off on me and uh, hit the old set of plows over here, the old white 348 three bottom plow. Sitting here in the shed, it, uh, it don't get used anymore. Let's see if I can get the block here and maybe when I pull away from it, it'll sit down on that. Uh, that way it don't fall over because they're not very sturdy sitting here. My uncle would use them years ago. I think he used to do on the 2090 for something. I think it was like rye ground or something he tried to plow under. But it didn't work out very good from what my dad had said because all the rye and that just got tangled up and it was it was just a mess. So they haven't been used since. They just sit up here in the lean to up here at the heifer farm. about 10 minutes of messing around with this thing I finally got it it used to be sloped up in here and then the water would lay but it was easier to back the wagon in here because you're backing it uphill and it wouldn't take off on you but now since I had cleared all that out and put some good shell in here and built it back up again it's uh I guess I wasn't used to it taking off on me what to do is the next time is uh, hook the chain up as well and I push it in here to keep it from knocking them plows over I've been trying to set my GoPro up to film me dumping feet in here, but somebody, <clears throat> Mr. Red here, keeps slicking my camera off the head gates here. It was sitting here, and then it was sitting up there, and he won't let it alone. So now I guess I'm just got to keep it with me in the skid loader because if I set it up again, he'll probably knock it down in the door and step on it and break it. It's still raining pretty good. I uh, come out here and I'm gonna show you the corn quick. It's uh, the, this here was the last the last field that we planted. Uh, the heifer farm and then there's a field up the down the road a little ways and you go up a driveway there that we rent. That was the last that was planted too. So the field above the road up here, up above the bags there, and then this field and field up there and there's a couple of fields down at the chicken houses and another farm they were all planted within uh, two days of each other it was a, a Friday and then a Saturday there that we had that custom planted so here it is it's uh it's not terrible tall but it's probably it's probably pushing seven eight foot in places there get on in there away from the outside I'm sure it's a lot better but Decent size ears. Um, most stalks have two ears on them. It's, uh, it's really green, yeah, as you can see. It really hasn't started dying off yet. First stuff that we planted looks pretty similar to that. I mean, it's starting to go the other way, but it's uh, it's not hurting anything, that's for sure. Then we have some of the corn that was planted in the tillage ground. That's way ahead of all of this stuff. It's gotta be the first that's gonna need harvested but it's now we got this rain here it's got to push us back uh, at least another week probably I'm sure uh, it definitely won't be this week but we'll be chopping maybe next week the following week I don't know we'll see here there's nothing better to do on a day like today than work in the shop got the old 870 Agri King pulled in here 
it needs a new throttle cable put on it so right up there your top lever right here my finger that's your throttle there's a cable that goes from that lever down in and then it comes to the foot throttle this tractor's got a foot throttle and it's all connected together so there's a cable that goes to the foot throttle and then from the foot throttle you got this linkage that goes to the injector pump to give it more fuel wherever you push the throttle down it'll pull that and uh, the injector pump will uh, give the engine more fuel we have been using the tractor since we only got this tractor in the 125 to rake hay and ted hay you just have to use a foot throttle um, we have a new cable for it it's sitting right here on the hood so I gotta get some stuff tore off of here and try to get that cable put on so there's this here plate that you get down into the power shift and that it just gives you access to that I gotta lift that off and then I gotta take this here thing off the side console and uh, that should give me access to that throttle cable down in here this here is stuff for the power shift I believe when the other tractors are down on the side of the tractor but this one here however is different I had this off one time before the whole hood to try to fix the leak there at the brakes but it's still leaking so maybe while it's in here have another look at that but uh, this in here is <clears throat> it's tight like Cole from Sunny Farms would say it's brine tight I don't know who put this on here last but man I think you're looking at the person oh jeez This here is your linkage for your foot throttle. It comes over here and then this here goes to the injector pump. But right here is where the hand throttle ties into it. It's a stub that sticks up here and then it uh, connects there and then your linkage goes back in. Back in here and I believe it's this right here. Right here it is. I pulled it down through and then it goes up across back in there. But the bracket that it fastens to actually broke off the side of the fender here so that's uh, nice now I got that to fix too what I have to do here is loosen this here up to take this piece of bracket off and see it moving right there it just comes over and then it uh, comes up through here where I go linkages and levers and that are and then it uh, it just goes right up here to the front it's hard to get into to loosen it up and adjust it both places but it broke off so I didn't have to get down in there but it's gonna be harder getting it back on got the old girl all tore apart now I uh, figured you know what might as well take this part of the hood off here and get into this brake valve thing here and uh, see why that's leaking because that thing just pours the oil out so I'll try to get it cleaned up over there the best I can fire her up and pump the brakes out a couple times and uh, keep some constant pressure there and see if I can see where it's pushing oil out if I had to guess I, I think it's probably an o-ring inside of this thing I mean it's it's wet here and then you can tell it was really running right here so I'll have to get her figured out because now's the time to do it while it's raining and we don't need the tractor dad said they're getting pretty close with the tractor so I'll put this project off to maybe later this afternoon or something to get time again but I'm gonna have to get down here and help unload the tractor when it comes
There she is. Glad to have her home. So Marv had the axles pulled out. He had the these bolts here, they all come out. And you take this whole housing and that off and he had the power take off and that pulled out and yeah, he had the whole rear end tore apart on this tractor to get that pin fixed. And uh he put new brakes on it. Got the three point arms working again. And there was uh, a couple lines leaking go across the above the tractor up there. Around this side. He uh, fixed there's some wires that come into these solenoids here. And uh must have been right here the harness had rubbed through and see he put some this conduit stuff here on um must have rubbed through there and he said it was pretty much a fire hazard because there was a bunch of oil and uh just dirt and stuff and bare wires and that's not good we don't want to see that we already have one tractor burnt we don't need this one too planning on putting some battery shut offs on these tractors uh, master switches that way whenever tractor sitting here you can shut the power off so there would be a short or something somewhere it wouldn't catch fire whenever nobody's around